Today we're going to make an enriched dough and more specifically a brioche dough. First of all, we're gonna start with a pre-ferment. I have some water in here. Here goes the flour and just a little bit of yeast. We're gonna mix this up really well and then allow it to rise for several hours or even in the refrigerator overnight. Now that most of the dry ingredients have been incorporated, we're gonna place it on the table and quickly bring it together into a small ball. And with a knife, we're gonna score it in the center, kind of into a cross shape. Let's put everything up here. And it seems dry, but it's gonna be just perfect. We're just gonna work it a bit making sure that everything is well incorporated. And now we're simply going to place it in a bowl with a cut across, just like so. And now, magically, we already have one ready. And let me show it to you. There it is after it's been able to rest. Our main ingredients are flour, butter, lots of it, and eggs. Let's get started. Initially, we're going to put the flour in here, and this one is a great one uh, by Molino Denti. It's really, really nice. And this is a bread flour, a strong flour. And then here we have some all purpose flour. We're already going to put the salt in here and mix it up so it will not bother the yeast. And then we're going to put the yeast in the honey. Let me see here. Where is my little spatula? There. Put the honey in. A little bit of rum. And here comes the hook. We'll place the heavy cream in there as well. Let's make sure all of it is out. The sugar. And now we're going to bring these ingredients together and now slowly we're going to add one egg at a time as well as the pre-ferment. We're also going to add the vanilla. And then this time we have chosen to add the zest of an orange. So let's turn this off, lift it up, and add the zest of the orange. Now, if you make a savory brioche, um, then you would omit the orange and the vanilla. Like for instance, one really good one is um, brioche and you wrap it, wrap it around some brie cheese, and oh my, is that good. Add this in here. Close it back up. And once again, mix it. We're gonna throw in some of the pieces of the pre-ferment. So all this can nicely knead together. It's very important to use cold ingredients. The eggs need to be cold, the cream needs to be cold, and the butter, you will see the butter will need to be cold as well, but pliable. Now the dough at this point is actually pretty sticky. And you think, how in the world is this gonna come together? But we are going to uh, set the speed on a bit higher. And for about four minutes, we're going to mix it like this and allow the dough to kind of come away from the sides of the bowl. Every once in a while, it's important for the sides to be scraped down. And so this little rubber spatula is absolutely, absolutely perfect to do this with. But you can already see that the gluten strands are, are beginning to form. So we put this back on over here.
As you can see, the dough is really beginning to come away from the side of the bowl, and that's a good sign. Now we're gonna be able to add the butter. And the butter needs to be cold, but at the same time also pliable. So if the butter was to be a little bit harder than this, you can use something such as this to kind of beat on it, to keep it cold, but still be able to be pliable and perfect to place into the dough. So we're gonna just add one piece at a time. And uh, once that piece is incorporated, only then we'll be able to add the next one. So that one piece was well incorporated. We're gonna add another one. And we're gonna keep doing this until all the butter has well been incorporated. Let me just add one more. There we go. Can you see how the dough has completely come away from the side of the bowl? And the butter has completely been incorporated as well. And look at this gorgeous dough now. And we can probably, um, by stretching it with my hands, we can see the beautiful, beautiful gluten strands that have been formed. Look at this, gorgeous. Now we're gonna take it out of here and we're gonna need to let it double in size for a good hour and a half, two hours. And then we're gonna need to refrigerate it. Now we're gonna dust the work surface a little bit more. Place our dough right on here and just build a little bit of extra strength into it. And this is when kind of a hard um, bench scraper is really nice to use. We're gonna give it just a bit more strength by doing this. What's so nice about brioche dough, once it has risen, you can divide it up and freeze it. Or you can shape some of the uh, pastries that you would like to make and then freeze those before baking. So here we're gonna put it into a food safe container with a lid and place it on the counter for about an hour and a half to two hours until it doubles in size and then into the refrigerator. And here we are the day after we just took it out of the refrigerator. It has definitely doubled in size. And now we're gonna be able to prepare all kinds of goodies with it.